This video is brought to you by Sailrite. Visit Sailrite.com for all your project supplies, tools, and instructions. In this tutorial video, we're going to show you how to reupholster a car door panel. Typically, they're found in classic cars. These panels are covered in vinyl, and on the underside is what's called a door panel board or cowl board. Underneath the vinyl fabric, there is a sew foam to give it a soft appearance and some padding. In most situations, you'll be able to use the door panel board or cowl board that is found under the old upholstered fabric. If the door panel board is in bad shape, you may have to duplicate it. And here we're duplicating it on what's called a waterproof cowl board. We find that the Scryball water soluble white marking pencil marks well on the cowl board. Then we slice it with a razor blade, or you can use scissors. The nice thing about the Scryball water soluble white marking pencil is that the marks can be removed with a wet rag, as seen here. We've marked the locations where each one of the plastic rivet inserts need to be inserted and we're using a hole cutter, the Berry King mallet, and a cutting pad on the underside to punch holes at each one of those locations for those rivet fasteners. Sometimes they're referred to as trim panel clips or Christmas tree fasteners or clips. Sailrite does not sell these trim panel clips, but you can find them easily on a search online. We recommend marking the cowl board. This is the inside, and we use the Scryball water soluble white marking pencil to do that. And then we strike a line approximately where we want the blue panel and the off white or cream panel. You'll find a large selection of vinyl brands and colors at the Sailrite website. We've laid the right side of our fabric facing down, so we're writing on the back side of the fabric. We want our fabric where it wraps around the cow board to be approximately three inches oversize. Where the cream color will join up with the blue color, we marked a half inch under that for seam allowance. Then we strike a straight line from side to side at that location. Now we can cut out our vinyl fabric. The only edge that needs to be cut perfectly straight is the edge that lines up with the blue panel. Obviously your colors may be different. So there we're using the clear acrylic ruler, a rotary cutter, and a cutting mat. And we are cutting a straight line along that edge. Now we'll place our cow board on top of that and confirm that we have enough fabric around the entire perimeter. And now we're working on the blue fabric. The fabric is facing the tabletop and we're cutting around it with the rotary cutter and the cutting mat. Same process. For a soft, plush feeling, we're going to glue sew foam to the vinyl fabric on the underside. The General Trim Adhesive by 3M is available at Sailrite, and the sew foam has a fabric backing so that when you sew through it, the thread does not pull through the foam. That way we can create beautiful pleats. Whether we install pleats or not, the sew foam needs to be glued to the vinyl. On the General Trim Adhesive, there's a light, medium, and heavy application. We want to spray on the light application here. We will apply glue to both surfaces, the foam on the back side, not on the fabric side, and the vinyl. Then we will carefully place the vinyl on top of that foam. If you get it in the wrong position, don't worry, it can be peeled up as long as you do it right away. Once it's stuck down though, it will be permanent. Here we're making an adjustment because there was an air bubble. Make sure all bubbles are worked out and the vinyl fabric is laying flat on top of the sew foam. The cream vinyl will not have pleating installed or sewn into it, but we still want to use sew foam there for the soft plush feel. And again, we're applying the glue to the side that does not have the fabric backing. We'll apply it to both the foam and the underside of the vinyl and stick it in place just like we did with the blue. And notice that the sew foam was always cut too large. That's always a good idea. That makes it easier to position the vinyl and glue it down. After we are done gluing the vinyl down, along the edge that is going to be sewn to the opposite color of vinyl, we will strike a line and cut along that line. So we have a nice straight edge and the sew foam is even with that edge. On the blue, we'll need to cut along this edge as well. So here we're going to strike a line and cut it too with scissors. Uh, 
These two edges, which are cut perfectly straight, will be joined together as seen here. We've decided to sew channels or pleats in the blue fabric alone. The size of the pleats or channels is totally up to you. For our project, we've chosen to sew the pleats every two inches. So here we're using the clear acrylic ruler and the blue wonder marker. We want to be careful about marking the vinyl, especially if we're marking on the decorative side, which we are, in a location where the marks may not come off. This washable Wonder Fabric Marker Blue uh, marks fairly lightly. In fact, it's very difficult to see the marks, but they are visible, especially to the naked eye, and they easily wash off the vinyl. As with any fabric marking pencil, it should always be tested prior to use. Here we're marking on the vinyl fabric with that marker, and we use a wet rag, and you'll notice the marks easily come off with a wet rag. Back to sewing in the pleats in the blue fabric. We have our marks on the vinyl fabric marked every two inches with that clear acrylic ruler and that marker. And now we are sewing a straight stitch approximately six millimeters in length at each one of those locations. Now we are not doing any reversing at the end and the beginning of our sewing, but we do recommend that you do that. Just don't sew too deeply into the vinyl because we do not want that reversing to show up on any portion of the exterior of our upholstered panel. It is always wise to test some of the vinyl in the sew foam for proper tension before starting to sew. We've already did that. We did not show that in the video. We're using the Sayerite Fabricator sewing machine with the workhorse servo motor here. At approximately the middle position, we've scrolled up our material to get it under the throat of the sewing machine, or we can start sewing from the opposite end as we are here. And here's what our finished stitching looks like, and that fabric on the backside will keep the stitch from pulling through the sew foam. There are a plethora of ways that you can sew your pleating into the vinyl fabric. Here we're stitching diamond pleats. We have a separate video showing how to do this at the link at the top right. Now simply sewing these two panels, the cream and the blue together at the middle position will not look good. So we're going to create a transitional strip in the middle. You can also use piping in the middle position if you like, but we believe this transitional strip looks pretty good. We've decided to use the blue vinyl fabric for our transition strip. We're using the clear acrylic ruler, the rotary cutter, and the cutting mat and cutting a three inch wide strip of the vinyl fabric. The length of it is extra long to wrap around the back side. We're going to turn it over and strike a line right down the center. So this line is one and a half inches from one of the long edges. And we're using a pencil to mark the underside of that transition strip. We're using seam stick for canvas. I know this is a vinyl product, but we're basting it on the back side. And we will run it down both long edges, very close to the raw edge of the vinyl fabric. Peel off the transfer paper, revealing the double-sided tape. And then we will fold both long edges to that line we struck in the center. The double-sided tape will hold our vinyl in place very well indeed. Now we can take this vinyl strip and place double-sided tape on the underside. That's the side that we just folded the hem back to. These two strips of double-sided tape or seam stick for canvas will be used to base the transition strip over top of our upholstered panels holding them in place. Peel off the transfer paper revealing the glue and then be sure the panels are orientated correctly uh, so that bottom edge is completely straight. Now if it's not straight, we're here, here using an L to find out if it's straight according to our pleats, we can peel it up and reposition it. That's one of the major advantages of the seam stick basting tape for canvas. It sticks very well, but you can rebaste it if it's not stuck in the correct spot. Now we can take our upholstered panel to the sewing machine. We do have to scroll up one side of the panel to get it underneath the throat of the sewing machine. And we decided to scroll the side that doesn't have the pleating in it. Now, had I to do this over, I probably would have scrolled the side that has our sewn pleats in it uh, because it is stuck down or sewn down much better than the side that is just glued down. 
It is possible that the vinyl fabric that is just simply being glued to the sew foam may actually cause some bubbles uh, because it may come unglued because it wasn't sewn. So we probably should have scrolled up the side that had the channels sewn in because it would dot. We are sewing down both legs of this transition strip with a straight stitch. We do not need to do any reversing at the beginning and the end because our fabric will roll around our upholstered board. So the reversing is not really necessary. This transition strip not only covers up our seam between the two colored vinyl pieces, but it also joins them together. Our vinyl upholstered car door panel is now ready to be adhered to the cow board. We're going to use our 3M General Trim Adhesive yet again and apply the spray glue to the back side. This is the sew foam with the fabric side facing up. In other words, the vinyl is facing down. Don't get confused. Obviously, you won't. After we've sprayed it onto the fabric side of the foam, we'll spray it on our board as well on the correct side. Now, please always follow the label directions of the spray glue that you're using. We're spraying it in both a vertical and horizontal uh, pattern on the board and also on the foam. And it is always important to let the solvent evaporate out of it before you stick it down to your application. Again, follow the directions on the can. Once the board's in place, we'll take our spray glue and spray approximately two inches inside the outer perimeter of the board all around the perimeter. The spray glue has already been sprayed to the foam. Now we want to make sure that it tacks up before we start to bond or fold the vinyl fabric over the edge. Here we're cutting some of the excess away. No reason to have too much fabric. Now roll that fabric around the edge of the board. Don't worry about finishing the corners. We'll do that a little bit later on. Do this around the entire perimeter. Then we'll come back to those corners and show you what to do there. To be assured that it sticks well, we're going to use the Cerite upholstery staple gun with a quarter inch staple legs installed. And we're going to staple the vinyl fabric uh, around the perimeter to the back side. And we want to make sure that the staple legs do not go through the front side of our vinyl fabric. And they are not. That's because we're using a quarter inch staple legs, which are really shallow. Now at the corners, we will fold the fabric and cut a slit like we just showed there and cut some of the excess away here. Now what you're trying to do here is it doesn't really matter what it looks like on the back side. What matters is what it looks like on the outside surface. So we're going to fold or tuck the vinyl fabric neatly at this corner and staple it in place. If there's too much foam or vinyl, you can trim it away. The glue helps to hold that corner uh, in place and also the staples. If there's too much fabric around a panel clip, you can take your scissors and cut away some of the vinyl or the sew foam at each one of those clips. An upholstered car door panel always has locations for hardware, whether it be a roll-up window or an ashtray or some other hardware. Here there's an ashtray, so we're cutting an X uh, on the back side through the sew foam and through the vinyl. Here there is a roll up handle. We used a pin to mark the location of the vinyl on the outside surface. We did use some spray glue on the back side of this location for the ashtray. And then after allowing the solvent to evaporate out, 
causing the glue to become tacky, we can roll the vinyl and the sew foam back to the underside of our upholstered panel. Then, if you'd like, you can staple it in place as well, though the hardware typically holds this vinyl back as the hardware is pushed through. Now, we don't have the hardware for this video, so we're not going to be able to show that, uh, but we are going to simply staple it in place so that it stays in location once the hardware is pushed through. It will help to hold the vinyl and the sew foam and our stitching in place. There are multiple styles and different ways that car door panels can be upholstered. This is just one of the thousands of different ways that they can be done, but basic principles are all the same. Here's the list of materials and the tools that we used in this video to make this car door upholstered panel. You'll find hundreds of RV and car upholstery vinyl fabrics at the Sayrite website. Here are some related videos that may be of interest to you. For more free videos like this, be sure to check out the Sayrite website or subscribe to the Sayrite YouTube channel. Be sure to click the bell to be notified of new videos when they become available. I'm Eric Grant, and from all of us here at Sayrite, thanks for watching.